So with the academics of sites and site configuration out of the way, let's talk now about how you go about configuring sites. You can probably see why I'm just using three different sites in this example, because as we start getting into, what was that, seven different sites or so? Having seven different sites begins to be a very weighty, complex activity in figuring out which connections need to happen. We'll start relatively simple by just using just a small number of sites and connecting those together. Here I am back on my uh, Windows 8.1 desktop. I'm taking a look at Server Manager, and I'm going to come over here to Active Directory Sites and Services. And once the Sites and Services console pops up here, we'll take a look at what our Sites and Services configuration looks like directly out of the box. Now, this configuration is literally directly after the installation of an Active Directory infrastructure. There's no additional configuration I've done to this far. Uh, this, far. this is pretty much what you should be seeing if you were adding in your own or working with your own Active Directory demonstration environment uh, on your own. The only difference you might see here is I actually have, I believe, one additional server. That's my DC server. That's the server I actually kind of begin all of my eval environments off of. We'll ignore its existence here in this configuration and focus our attentions here on the two Denver servers, my Las Vegas server and my Phoenix server. So they've got four servers here uh, in three different locations. I have under subnets over here, have, I have no subnets currently configured. And you'll see that I have a site already configured called Default First Site Name. Now, great little name here because it literally describes exactly what this first site is. It is literally the default first site name. And that's, that's awesome to have. But in our configuration, we want to set up individual sites that correspond with the different subnets that therein correspond to the different geographic locations that we need to configure here for our Active Directory replication traffic. So the first thing I'm going to do is just rename default first site name here to, we'll call it uh, headquarters, so that I can put my DC server in this location called headquarters. And then I'm additionally going to go through and create additional sites here by right-clicking on sites and choosing new site. Now when I first create sites, you'll notice that if I punch in DEN as the name of the, my Denver site, I need to associate it here with just a site link object. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about site link objects in the clip coming up next. But for right now, we haven't actually created anything other than the default IP site link. So I'll create my IP site, and you'll, you'll notice a little dialog box that pops up. This is not an error message. This is just a warning to let me know that I need to ensure that the Denver site is linked to other sites using site links as appropriate. I need to add subnets for DEN into the subnets container. We'll do that next. And then I also need to install domain controllers in DEN or move existing domain controllers into that site. So this is, again, it's not an error message. This is just a reminder that there's a lot of linkages that you have to put in, into place in order for these sites to actually function. Let's create another site here, Phoenix. And then a third site over here, which will be our Las Vegas site. There's LAS. So now we have the three sites in here, and right now the three sites don't contain much. They contain an empty description, uh, a lo empty location field, uh, and pretty much all the usual stuff that you're used to seeing when you look at properties dialog boxes inside any of these Active Directory consoles. Our next step in the process is to create the different subnets that we will link to the sites we just created. Let me go ahead and uh, do that up here under subnets. And if you recall, we've got three different subnets we need to create. The 192.168.0 net, which needs to be associated with DEN. The 192.168.2 net, which needs to be associated with uh, LAS, 192.168.2.0.24, connected with LAS. And then the third one, which will be 192.168.3, 192.168.3.0, which is connected with the Phoenix site. So you'll notice now, if we come back here to our sites and take a look at the properties of that site, we should see a subnet has now been associated with this. You have to do this because the site object has no value until it gets attached to one of the subnets that has been created. And I say this, it's, it seems simple, but it, you find this all the time in situations walking into people's environments where the original installation of Active Directory may have been correct as it uh, relates to the actual subnets that existed at that time. But you would be surprised how many different Active Directory environments you walk into, where over time the number of subnets has changed and evolved, or the type of subnets, or just the configuration of them. And somebody forgot to actually go back and reset what the sites and services configurations would be. So again, it, if it seems like I'm harping on this, recognize it's just simply because you find it happen out in the wild all the time. 